Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Strata Hadoop World in New York City 2013. I'm here with Quentin. Quentin, how you doing? I'm very well, thank you. So you're a corporate VP at Microsoft, mm -hmm. and you're talking about bringing big data to a billion people. Mm -hmm. Can you unpack that a little bit? Yeah, what does that mean? More? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which billion people? Yeah. 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 And I, what are they doing with it? Yeah, I think a big part of this, is, uh, what we're talking about is, is the role of big data in an active way. I mean, you know, if you look at everything that's being done to build telemetry for the world and sensors and the city of Barcelona's example now has um, infrastructure and sensors and networks. They, they know what's going on with their citizens and the guests of the city and I mean, it's happening and there's a lot of passive involvement in that by people, right? The billion, we're really talking about act, more active involvement, people being curious about things and being able to get fundamentally just answers to their questions, right? Ranging everything from the stuff that you'd expect in business, you know, like, you know, I saw a, a, a dip in my sales data this, you know, this week or whatever it is. Why is that? Well, I mean, it turns out that's a, that's a big data question where you can look at the social media, you can look at, like if you're, one of the, one of the things I found out talking to consumer goods company is um, one of the best signals for detergent sales is, is the municipal water supply. If you can understand the, the flow rates of the municipality's oh, water supply, because yeah. laundry's a double digit percentage of that, like you, you, you know something about what's going to happen with your detergent sales, basically, right? And it could be because the city's doing an effort to reduce water consumption. There could be some public campaign. But as an individual product manager in a region, do you know all that? Do you, do you know that the local, you know, investigative reporting guy, like, did something that 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 hurt your reputation locally? Not unless you really tapped into all the world's information, right? And so. It's only for business, reaching everybody in a way that lets them just be curious about what's going on and not have to be data experts and choosing columns out of a database or writing code to pull properties out of JSON documents, right? Yeah. But even in the, in the consumer world, you know, um, you know, things like sports and, you know, you know, fantasy leagues and all that kind of stuff, like what if you could empower all them with the ability just to ask questions about all the statistical data in those worlds? Well, that would totally change that as well, right? And so. Across a broad range of human activity, we believe big data is not just about the Illuminati and their SQL queries and structured reports and all this stuff. We think it's about people being able to just ask questions. Yeah. So Microsoft recently made a pretty significant announcement around Hadoop and HD Base. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about what that is? And, yeah, and HD Insight yeah, is. Yeah, HD Insight, right. Yeah. Uh, HD Insight for Windows Azure yeah. is the thing we announced at WinGA yesterday, and you know, literally, you know, we've 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 taken, you know, the work we've been doing together with HortonWorks to to harden and build it, the right security models, the right tools integration, all that stuff, and bring it in as a cloud offering. And so, you know, we've been cooking that in preview most of this year, and then and then uh, we're, we're able to reach GA. It's it's amazing to watch. I mean. You know, talking to some of my colleagues here, we always sort of swap stories about how oh, we have this customer's doing this really interesting thing. Like one of the really fun things about about being in this space right now is the the, the variety of challenges that people and businesses and governments, whatever, are taking on to, to move the world forward. And so having HD Insight going to GA is just another one of those moments where it's like, oh, you know, finally we're unlocking it, you know, another huge set of people to go and unleash their own individual creativity. So Hortonworks, you guys have uh, had a relationship with them for a couple of years now? Yeah, almost, yeah. yeah. So they're the most open of the uh, Hadoop ecosystem, yeah. and you guys have partnered with them. How is yeah. that going, and, and what went into that yeah. uh, decision? Because it's kind of an interesting... Well, I mean, there's this two, sort of two layers of the decision. Well, one, for Microsoft to make such a big bet on an open source project is, when we first announced it, people were like, really? Like, you know, it's, it's, um, it was certainly a different thing for us because we have our own, as you can imagine, we run incredibly large scale in our properties, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, you know, between Bing and Xbox Live and Office 365 and other things, we have, we have a lot of data. I mean, I'll just put it that. And, and, and we have even really great proprietary, homegrown, built out of Microsoft Research kind of technology that solves a lot of the same kind of challenges that the Hadoop ecosystem is after, right? Um, but we chose to go down the Hadoop route because the world had spoken. It's a standard. And for us to, to fly in the face of that just didn't make strategic sense, yeah. right? You know, it, it, clearly the world was embracing this. It's a little like, you know, when, when we started doing the relational database, now 
almost two decades ago, yeah. not doing SQL, but doing some other thing would have made no sense, right? That's a similar thing here, right? So embracing a dupe really made sense. And Hortonworks, you know, frankly, they're, they're really, truly after pushing what's in the, the standard, right? They, they, they want to be Apache trunk, they want to be core. Um, you know, certainly there's a lot of different takes on how to take the open source work and evolve it and all that stuff. But for us, keeping to the, keeping to the, to the core of it, it just gave us tremendous sort of confidence that our work in the open source arena would actually benefit everybody, right? It wasn't enough for us to make Hadoop work great on Windows just for us. Right. Or our own right. private place, we yeah. really needed it to find its way back, right? To and you know, for, for Hadoop to really thrive, the reason we're involved, for example, in, in, in Stinger or Tez is because those things need to succeed. And, and we want them to succeed, regardless of what platform you know, it's even on. So you know, we really did partner up with them because our sort of view of the world and how to contribute back was very, very live. So Microsoft is known for, for generations of having a stack in the enterprise and, yeah. and having a really strong play in the enterprise. Where do you see Microsoft and big data going in the future with the enterprise? Yeah, I, we were at a conference called uh, PASS, the PASS Summit, um, this was a uh, SQL Server community summit, you know, thousands of attendees and the whole thing. And one of the things I was talking about there was that this whole thing between on-prem data sources and appliances and and, and private cloud and public cloud and all stuff is, is going to end up being this continuum of a whole platform, yep. right? And one of the things we're really striving to do is find ways to, to give our customers the best of the innovations where, where they are, right? And so for example, Q&A, which is the, 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 the thing I talked about at the end of the talk this morning where you just type in questions and yeah. these charts come back and I mean, it's a, it's a huge achievement just in terms of bringing together natural language and, and, and data processing and you know to answer questions with charts you have to kind of understand a lot and, and guess at what the human is really after and how to visualize that data that in a way that may make sense to them right so a lot of work that, that went into that it's all in it's all in office 365 it'll it'll talk to on-prem data sources you can model on-prem data sources you can model data coming out of out of HD insight and Azure or out of the relational database systems or other data sources you have your own data or whatever but it's fun we're finally building it in the cloud because it lets us evolve it very quickly it lets us get to scale it lets us get our customers up and going instantaneously basically right yeah. and so you know our play in terms of overall platform is ensuring that this whole continuum all comes together. And so, you know, our partnership with Hortonworks an example, you know, we're super proud of the work they've done for HTTP for Windows, but their distributions also run on other operating systems and customers then end up yeah. with choice. Yeah. And at the end of the day, the value of big data is about all these different data sources, right? It's, it is relational, it is partner data streams that you may get um, you know, through data web standards or through some other means, and it is data that's being captured now in, in places like Hadoop, on-prem, in the cloud. You know, we have auto auto industry that's that's putting all this cards coming yeah. up into Azure yeah. as blobs, and they process it with HD Insight, right? All those things need to come together in order to provide these kinds of insights, right? So that whole platform. And it's important, right? And, and, and the, the tools and the systems that we're building have to work across all of it. Excellent. Quentin, we look forward to seeing you at Future Stratus. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much.